you actually started out, you wanted to be an actor, and after a number of years, you abandoned that. Have you ever thought that you know, the country and the world has now missed having another De Niro or Pacino by your not being in the acting world? No, I think it was a great benefit to America that I decided to give that up and go to the other side. I, I, think, I think fairly early on, and I was smart enough to, to realize it probably three or four or five years into my acting career, that I was sort of a mediocre actor. Uh, I was also tending bar more than I was acting during those, those <laughs> years. Okay. Um, and I looked around and I said, you know what, there are people who do this a lot better than I do. There's probably something else I could do in the business where I could satisfy my creative juices and still, uh, okay. and still be involved, and, and it ended up being a good decision. Well, it worked out, certainly. It worked out. So you grew up on Long Island. Right. And then you went to college at Bucknell. Mm -hmm. Did you want to be an actor there? No, I started out being pre-med because that's what every Jewish kid from Long Island <laughs> had to do when you went to school is you had to try to become a doctor. doctor. And what happened when you decided not to do it? Uh, well, I took my first organic chemistry class and I said, this is horrible. Right. I'm bad at the sciences. and. Uh, uh, it was a, a tough conversation with my parents to tell them that I didn't want to be a doctor. What did your father say? Well, we were at a bar in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, which is where Bucknell is, and I broke into my father, who was a hard-working guy. He owned gas stations, and he worked with his hands. I said, I've decided I'm not going to be a doctor. And he said, well, what are you going to do? I said, well, I've decided I'm going to New York to become an actor. <laughs> and he said, what do you want to do that for? And I said, well, it's what makes me happy. And he said, happiness, you think that's all there is to life? <laughs> so that was sort of a typical response of that generation. Um, when, when I finally became president of CBS, he forgave me. Okay. <laughs> so you went from Bucknell, you went to New York to be an actor, a stage actor, and you did some TV shows, actually. Correct. Correct. And if somebody wants to watch Six Million Dollar Man, you're there sometimes? There, there are two or three episodes of Six Million Dollar Man where I'm playing a bad guy being chased by Lee Majors. And... It's all right, Mrs. Wagner. I think a touch of heat. I'll just take him inside. He'll be all right. Okay, uh, and Six Million wasn't your compensation for that, right? No, it hardly was, no. <laughs> so when you say, okay, I'm not going to be an actor and you weren't going to be a doctor, right. how did you decide to get into the other side of television, the production side? When, when I was an actor, I, you know, most of the time as an actor, you're on set and you're virtually doing nothing. You go there for a 16-hour day and you're probably working about 20 minutes. So I was sort of fascinated mm -hmm. with what everybody else did and I sort of did a quick study on what, what it was like to be on a set and learned about what the business was about. And so when an opportunity came to get to the other side of the camera as a, a junior executive in a production company, I jumped at it. So when you do that business, you have to be good at either reading scripts and say this is going to work or picking talent. So what was your skill set, the scripts or the talent or both? You know what? Being a mediocre actor, I knew who good, good actors were. I really did. I could say, gee, I wish I could do that. And I, I sort of felt that. And look, I had, I had very good creative instincts. Uh, I watched a lot of television. I saw what was working, what wasn't working. And uh, I, I became good at it. I became good at picking shows. 